Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. My name is Pia Flores. I represent Mirlo Limited, which is an educational agency based in Helsinki, Finland. And today I'm interviewing Hanna Lensman. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. It's correct. Hi, thank you. Who just recently virtually volunteered in Jaipur, India. Thank you very much for joining us today, Hanno, and thank you for joining the program. And uh, the purpose of this interview today is that I would like to hear a little bit about your experience. And um, first of all, why did you volunteer virtually? I mean, the whole program started uh, when our, our school's uh, principal contacted me uh, via the school's mail asking if I'd like to uh, go, if I'd like to participate in this. Okay. And my first thoughts were, wait a minute, teaching. This is an excellent opportunity. <laughs> Mostly because I'm quite interested in um, uh, teaching as a profession. I uh, immediately uh, sent an affirmative reply and also, uh, while I, when I was uh, sending the reply and writing uh, the email, I also noticed that I can also do quite a lot of good while uh, I myself get uh, experience, useful experience in uh, guiding children and making things easy for them. Okay, sounds very good. And uh, making things easy for children. Okay, I'll get back to that. So what was most memorable for you during this volunteer period? Oh my goodness. Uh, memorableness, like figuring out whether or not something is memorable or not, isn't quite my forte in, in various uh, events or uh, experiences. But honestly, the, I think uh, the, in the moments I enjoyed the most here uh, would be the moments when I saw the children's faces lit up with uh, excitement, thrill, and it was just so uh, satisfactory to, satisfying mm -hmm. to, see the uh, children seethe with, with uh, thrill about uh, doing something fun and uh, but, but also succeeding in whatever task I gave them. Okay, so you really feel that you were able to do a bit of difference for them in the class? Absolutely. Well, that's a great feeling to have actually. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the different pupils in the class and um, did you, well, what kind of uh, image you got of the community they live in? I mean, uh, the most I got to see was some, uh, a little introduction of uh, the uh, place itself, the facility itself, mm -hmm. uh, and the students themselves. But I, I think. It, uh, seeing the students, they are very well behaved, and mm -hmm. I'm sure it's it might be kind of uh, in uh, like the local way of teaching that uh, students be well behaved and uh, that they don't disturb their lesson, for example, and all that. So. I saw that the kids were, I'd say they were uh, maybe even a bit more mature than many uh, of that age. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, do you think, do you know why they felt a bit more motivated to study? Is that the correct way to put it? Um, I mean, I. I'm not sure if it's if this is true or not, but mm -hmm. it, 
if this was the first experience for these kids as well to uh, be taught by a foreigner for a far from a far away far away land then i'm sure that must have been something special for them since it was the first time they did it mm -hmm. but okay. even if it even if we, if, if uh, we weren't the first ones i'm so i'm sure it has begun uh, it has become uh, quite a pleasant uh, routine for them mm -hmm. and it uh, probably was very interesting for them to have a teacher from finland it's that is also not, true yeah it's not a close country to india well yes. what did you do on a day-to-day -day basis there in the classes in classes i was uh in charge of uh three of nine uh mm -hmm. days total and oh three <laughs> excuse me um but uh in those three three days i um excuse me what was the uh question again oh, what did you do day to day so basically so, how did you go about teaching and did you have any other activities so day to day what did you do uh in in the first place i wanted to focus on uh the pupils using their skills mm -hmm. as as soon as uh they got them so okay. i ran a lot of exercises and example sentences them speaking up and uh maybe even taking the initiative and also i wanted to make them quite light-hearted so uh of course i sp sprinkled in some humor and mm. uh some fun things as well for example uh drawing things and it was mostly uh what i uh, mostly wanted to do is take the syllabus that i was uh, uh provided and mm -hmm. make it fun for the students okay how did you find uh, telling jokes or in general humor when you have to do it um, in distant mode to another to people who represent completely other culture and they are in another country so how did you th how did that go i mostly based on based it on um basically kind of more situational com uh, uh, comic and mm -hmm. uh very simple uh word play if there was any and it was mostly that so uh it was mostly about things that may or may not have been uh, a bit silly, but also lighthearted in the context that I gave them. Okay, very good. So what kind of support did you receive from the local person during the classes? Um, it was, uh, he mostly, uh, translated what i uh, told them to do and what mm -hmm. i uh, taught them and also they were a bit of a help whenever there was a bit of a mishap in uh, for example in communicating and he was quite uh, a lot of help in mm, mostly in man managing the class as sitting behind a screen doesn't really help much with mm -hmm. uh, actually managing the students and uh, thinking about uh, what they actually actually would do uh, when I told them X. Yes, okay. All right, I have a little bit of background noise here. Hopefully it doesn't uh, disturb. So how do you think uh, this experience has changed you oh my i mean this has taught me mostly about like taking a piece of information mm -hmm. and 
breaking it down into sizable chunks that are easy to digest uh -huh. and also make these uh, things to learn concrete, even if they, uh, at the base level, were abstract. Okay. So that is one skill that really developed, even, even if it was uh, just three days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what, uh, what were the biggest of things you gained? Is there anything you can, well, you already said that to be able to actually explain something rather ab abstract to the students, was there anything else? Um, I think I gained a place to go in the future. Okay. <laughs> That's very good because it's uh, going to be very, very interesting experience to actually be there yeah, on exactly. the side, doing the uh, teaching over there and getting the sense of community, learning to understand how people live and work there. Well, would you recommend this type of program, meaning virtual volunteering, to people of your own age? Of my own age, absolutely. Okay. Really, everyone deserves to interact with people their own age. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I've heard quite a lot of people uh, my age talk about how annoying little kids are <laughs> and so on. But honestly, in different, in certain context, it's the opposite, honestly. Mm -hmm. And that is what really brings the enjoyment in in this program and also it is basically it is kind of good uh learning experience as well mm -hmm. as getting experience in uh, teaching for example um and also kind of uh making progress even as a first tip of to volunteering, this is an excellent choice. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if it were to be uh, as a collaboration project, like uh, I did with uh, the two others, mm -hmm. I would recommend mostly friend groups. Okay. Maybe two or three friends, mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, people, barely acquaintances. All right, so you found that bit a little bit difficult to get the communication going on with your Finnish group and at the same time to do the teaching in India. So, I mean, it was uh, at the start, it kind mm -hmm. of felt a, a little, uh, a little bit like I had to push them uh, forward, kind of encourage them. Uh, uh, over and over again, but honestly, when the when the shop came to push, they really were excellent. Okay. So yeah. it, in the end, it wasn't a problem, but still, even at the start, so so that it would not be a, a problem at all from the start, from the get go, I would suggest a friend group. All right. Okay, very good. And um, so what would you say to other people who are thinking about doing virtual volunteering? What should they be prepared for? Um, what they should be prepared for is, I mean, depending, of course, uh, for example, uh, how, uh, how many times a week they're teaching. Mm -hmm. For example, for me, it was just three three times in two weeks uh -huh. so it wasn't that uh taxing but those that would do for example or every day or such might have to uh be ready to uh basically um take some more time of the day preparing the lessons as well okay and it uh, really 
I'd say it's kind of, it's kind of like um even I'm even though I'm kind of uh repeating this over and over again it's a great learning experience and honestly about even it might give us some lessons about uh humanity communicating with other people especially uh, intercultural uh communication so if you really want to do something good and meet uh, new people from a completely different culture this is the program for you all right thank you very much hanno and thank you for joining the program as well as this interview i greatly appreciate the opportunity <laughs> okay